I thought this morning would be a chance to take a look at some of the Adelaide Fringe acts that you may or may not have seen so far at the 2016 festival. This particular one at the Lion Arts Centre will shock you, it will surprise you, and given what this show is all about, it might even change some of the perceptions you might have had as well. Joining us on the line this morning from Bazinga Burlesque, the show is called Immoral Combat, we have Saskia Demure on the phone, one of the performers from the show, and we also have Mema Sita, who describes herself as the producer and the chief wrangler of Bazinga Burlesque, the Immoral Combat show at the Adelaide Fringe. Ladies, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. I thought I'd ask you uh, the first question, and uh, this is that if you have a look on the website and just, I guess, in, in general at this particular show, you're splicing in classic video games slash fighting games, and we can go down the list here. So things like uh, Super Mario Brothers, Tetris, Sonic the Hedgehog, and even the Muppets thrown in with some of the literary classics as well. So I guess the first question is, with this show... How do you tie in, or, or how did it come to be that it was tied in between some of what we might suggest being as the uh, the nerdier elements of life, combined with what is, what I consider at least to be quite the art form in burlesque? How does that all work? Well, Nerdlesque has been around for a very long time. It's, it's been around in the US, and it's, it's travelled its way over here, and um, a few of us around here do actually specialise in just Nerdlesque. Okay. So, yeah. It's burlesque and it's nerd-based and it's generally comedy as well. So um, I guess, first of all, Saskia, tell me about uh, your own story. How, how did you first get into this? How did it all start for you? For me, burlesque, I just kind of accidentally fell into it through an instructor who thought I could dance and asked me to perform with her. And that's how I actually met Mema, who is a producer of this show. Yep. And she knew that I was a, a Doctor Who fan because I've got a full Doctor Who sleeve. So she was like, well, hey, would you like to do some nerd left with me? <laughs> now, um, Saskia, we're talking about some of the uh, the classic video games and some of the, the fighting games there. What are some of your inspirations for the performances that you're doing at the Fringe this year? Katana. I love her character. She's feisty and she's fast and she's a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, just fill us in if, uh, for some of our audience who may not know. Who's, who's Katana? Katana, she's a Mortal Kombat character. Yep. She has the big fans that have got knives on them. Does a lot of kicking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, uh, Spectrum Blue as well. In terms of, I guess, what the uh, the show has been so far. Now, in and as you mentioned, the art form has been around for quite some time, but uh, in, in a lot of ways it is relatively new, particularly at the Fringe. So in, so far, what has the uh, perception been like with the Adelaide audience? Uh, the audience absolutely love it. Yep. All the genres they know done in a hilarious way. So people can really get involved in all characters everyone knows. Even if you're not a nerd, you know who Darth Vader is. You know who SpongeBob is. Yep. Everyone knows these characters. Okay. And you on stage being complete and what's what's the uh, the spread of ages uh, been like if it, it is of course an 18 plus event have you had uh, people f- ranging from the very young to maybe the young at heart in the audience oh completely completely you, you get the 18 year old and you also get you know right up to the grandmas and grandpas in the 80s and 90s like we have a whole plethora of people that come in just to be entertained really something different yeah absolutely pole dancing as well as well as fellas so, something for everybody. And look, I guess well, another question here is, it, the act of uh, burlesque, I'd imagine that uh, you're talking about uh, the, the, the show itself and uh, the pole dancing. Certainly uh, for someone like me, who is uh, currently sweating buckets here in the studio, probably not for my fitness level, but I imagine that uh, you would need to be reasonably fit uh, to keep on backing it up and performing day after day and night after night, wouldn't you? Oh, completely. By the end of it, we've lost about 10 kilos. So. Wow, jeez. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's impressive. Now, um, how many hours of uh, training would you say go into each show? Each show? Months. It, it takes a lot of, even just beforehand, even just coming up with the idea takes months. And then I've got, okay. got member back in here. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it takes months to, to suss out, but um, immoral combat is completely improvised. So um, people make it up on the spot. So they can't uh, rehearse. So uh, it's fair to say that maybe it borrows from the, the improv uh, comedy genre in a lot of ways as well. Yes, yes, definitely. We, we try to 
try to make it sort of start off sort of video game based, but then it gets more sillier and sillier and like a bit banana. Might be like or um, like uh, in our first first show, it ended up being Predator vs. SpongeBob. Okay. Like, and so like anything, it gets more and more ridiculous. <laughs> And we have like a sound gauge, gauges like the level of the audience. And we have some judges who are spotting what people are doing just in case the audience is so wowed that they don't make any noise. Mema, as uh, you've described yourself as uh, being the, the chief wrangler, did we we should say, is um, what's uh, we heard a bit from Saskia there with her story. Um, what's, what's your story and how you uh, got into this, particularly um, in looking at, uh, I guess, some of your own um, inspiration through some of the literary classics and also, as we were mentioning to Saskia just before, the uh, the classic video games as well. So so how did this all start for you? Well, I, I started doing Burlesque about five or so years ago and then uh, I competed in Miss Burlesque, uh, South Australia, as my first like solo piece. And the first thing I did was Super Mario and that went really well and at the moment at that time no one was doing nerd less very much okay not in um south australia and then with i've teamed up with saskia before and i love working with saskia and so um we've done a lot of the ring routines okay for a number of years and i love i'm that's my nerddom is lord of the ring <laughs> okay i'm a freak for lord of the Rings. i've been to new zealand i've uh, yeah, I, I love everything about Lord of the Rings, the books and the movies. So uh, I was asking uh, Saskia this uh, question before as to, well, in, in terms of uh, this particular show uh, with Immoral Combat, it is, well, relatively new to um, um, a, a South Australian audience. Is, um, have you found as well, and, and Saskia was saying that um, she has found the, the reaction and the reception of the audience uh, that they absolutely uh, love it. Uh, have you found the same as well? And, and have you been surprised by that uh, yes I have like when I that's I think one of the reasons why I kept kept doing it because when I was everyone loves everyone really loves Super Mario and I got such a massive reaction positive reaction to doing it and I I always do just as Super Mario you don't even really have to do very much although the sell my shop sure I do do a lot in that routine yeah but yeah they even if I just stood there as Super Mario and took off my clothes, um, <laughs> they they respond positively. I did it um, last night in the French club, and yeah, no matter where you go or what you where where it is, people people just people just love it, and that sort of goes with most of our routines because we we say that it's for us it's fun first, and somewhere down the the girls also happen to be sexy. Yep. But <laughs> yeah, you, to show that you. It's okay to bring your your mum to, like, or your dad to. It won't <laughs> okay. be like you won't be weirded out, or your partner. And yeah, so it's it's a fun show first, and we have as well as like burlesque, we have pole dancers who are incredibly talented um, acrobatically, and they and uh, a hoopist, like a world class hoop performer. Right. Yeah, and uh, we've had cabaret singers before, and yeah, it's just a, a real variety sort of night show that we do. Excellent. And uh, that's a, a question you were talking about, this idea of uh, potentially being weirded out. I, I would think, and you can uh, you can agree with this or, uh, or rebut it uh, either way, but there might be potentially some people out there who are of the opinion that uh, somehow this uh, this act of burlesque is, is somewhat seedy and has some overly unsavoury or overly sexual connotations. I mean, if, if you've uh, encountered that either thus far here or indeed elsewhere, how do you, aside from having the show itself, how do you counter some of those connotations or those perceptions if they exist? I think people do have those perceptions going into our show, but our show being so fun and so silly and so diverse in terms of body types and ages and and genders, we have guys as well. I think when they go in and see that show, they're like, "Oh, this isn't what you know. It's not. It's not seedy. It's ridiculous." Mm. <laughs> yeah, you definitely guess. notice the clothes coming off because of how much fun we're having. Yeah. Okay. And not all of us not all of us take a lot off. Mm. I certainly it's rare for me to take very much off at all, but you don't really notice because you're paying attention and you're having fun to the act. 
And most of our, I would say that a majority of our audience is straight women or couples. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's just, yeah, it's just fun. And we, we have had feedback from other burlesque companies and schools saying that people saw our show and had a, a very positive reaction to it. And it wasn't what they thought, well, it's not what burlesque has to be. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with normal burlesque and being sexy and, and all that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But it doesn't have to be. It can be just ridiculous. It can just be, yeah, silly. And that's what we're all, we're all about. And was the, of course, the finishing up with The Fringe, a couple of more shows to come, which we'll touch on very shortly. But uh, what's what's the next big plan for uh, for the Bazinga Burlesque crew and potentially the uh, Immoral Combat team? What, what are you hoping to uh, get to next? Wait! That's my, <laughs> my top priority. <laughs> like, uh, we've been flat chat. Also, yeah, but we've we've had a lot of people ask us to go to Melbourne. Okay. Um, so it sounds like there's a demand for our ridiculous show. And our host, um, Angus Hodge, who's a comedian from here, but he's based in Melbourne. So uh, and he's who we use like all the time. So he, with him being based in Melbourne and us having like some networks there, it makes sense to go to Melbourne next. That's what we're hoping to go to next. Yep. Any, anything internationally? We're, we're considering Edinburgh for Edinburgh Fringe. Um, and I think Jay Weatherall has like a big push this year for Australian acts to go to um, Edinburgh. So we're looking into that. No confirmation for that, but that, we are looking into that one. And or um, New Zealand. Do you think, in fact, the market would be bigger internationally for an act, which, as you said, which is kind of, which is as crazy and as fun and as a bit zany as yours? Yes, I I do. There's not really, um, unfortunately, there's not really anything to compare it to. There there are nerd um, burlesque shows like like Star Wars burlesque, Empire like burlesque, which is from here, but that's much saucier than what we do. So yeah, internationally, there's there's not really, or even here, there's not really anything to compare it to, so I wouldn't know totally, but who hates fun? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fun, fun's an international language, isn't it? Exactly. Everyone can have fun. Everyone likes fun, and it's also, our burlesque is, it, it's very clowny and physical theatery, so even if you don't speak English, it's still perfectly accessible. So, yeah, we're, we are looking, we are researching at the moment where we can take Immoral Combat to. Also, Immoral is such an easy show to put on and we would have, we would just take the core crew and go wherever and hopefully find locals to battle again. And I've got to ask you this as well, as someone who is a big fan of uh, the Big Bang Theory, of course, the uh, the catch cry of Dr. Sheldon Cooper being Bazinga when he makes one of his trademark jokes. Do either one of you have a particular favourite character from the program? Yes. My favourite is Sheldon. I And I am a big Big Bang Theory fan. And I was watching it just before I came here. Yeah, I Sheldon. Of course, Sheldon. Sheldon's the greatest. Hilarious. He's, yeah, he's hilarious. And um, the reason it's, it is called Bazinga is because it's a joke. Sheldon says Bazinga when it's a joke, and that's what we're about. We're about jokes. We're about fun. And, yeah, so that's why we're Bazinga Burlesque. And just before I let you go, ladies, uh, a couple of shows remaining, as we mentioned. When are they? Uh, where are they? And how much does it cost to get in? There's one tonight, Sunday the 28th, and at 8.30 p.m. at Nexus Arts. And then there's one on the 5th of March at 9 p.m. All right, fantastic. Well, uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully getting down there and seeing one of the uh, last two remaining shows. You can, of course, get your tickets, folks, from Fringe Ticks online. Member Sita and Saskia Demure from Belzinga Burlesque, the Adelaide Fringe 2016 show, Immoral Combat. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And, of course, all the best with your remaining two shows and, indeed, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.